What's up everybody, it's Dave from Let's Make a Game Together. Uh, I just want to say thanks, first of all, thanks for everyone who checked out the updated Patreon page and thanks to those who um, could afford to donate. Uh, that's really awesome guys, it's really uh, made my day and uh, if you haven't checked it out and feel like I'm um, checking out Patreon page, the link is in the description. Okay, so the first thing, let's uh, check out where we left off. So last episode we created this uh, camera system where the character would could uh, it follows the character and it stops at certain spots where we choose. Um, but the first, first, the first of all, I want to uh, look at tidying up the project a little bit. So our character can jump and then he can continuously jump. Uh, so that's something that we want to fix. Um, and we also uh, want to fix the um, dying um, coroutine just to, just to make it um, work properly. And we also, um, I think in this episode, it'll be a good idea to just get some very basic enemy AI um, happening. So Mario, Mario can, well not Mario, uh, super platformer bro, can uh, jump uh, and he can um, move around now. Um, we could put obstacles in, he could jump over them, um, but we need him to be able to interact with enemies. So I think that would be a good place uh, to start next. So first of all, let's tidy up our project. Um, so, so first thing we can do is let's adjust, let's open up the player health script. Um, and you've got this I and you're in a die that just loads the um, scene. Um, we're just going to get rid of the yield return uh, null. We're going to turn this into a void. We don't need it to be that yet. I'm just going to bring it back to basics. Uh, and instead of saying start coroutine die, we're just going to say um, um, we're just going to say. In fact, we're actually going to just get rid of this has 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 died equals true, because that's just the bool that just asks if it's true. And so it's just going to say, hey, if game object dot transform dot position dot y is less than negative seven, then we're just going to call the die uh, method. Cool. So we don't need um, has died uh, or any of that yet. We don't even need health, but in fact, we'll just get rid of it to neaten up our code. And let's jump back into the game. Let's test it out, see if it works. Cool. Re it reloads the level. So it does the same thing. Just neaten it up because I don't think we're going to be um, adjusting anything in the um, in that script for a little while. And I just wanted to come back to it and it'd be all clean and uh, new. Uh, next thing we want wanted to look at was... Um, the player move prototype. Okay, so open up the player move script, uh, which is this one here, which is this one, um, and we want to uh, have a method that detects whether or not the player has reached the ground or not. So to do that, um, so right now, like obviously, like I said before, the player can just continually jump whenever you press the space bar, which is not something that we want to do. Um, what we want to do is we want to make sure the player um, is on the ground. Now, there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can create a ray that takes a position and shoots downwards, and then if it collides with the ground, then it, then you set that your player is on the ground. Or there's uh, the old school method, or at least the old school method for me, uh, where you check if you're colliding with the ground with an on-trigger collision, and then you set a bull to true. So I'm just wondering which one we should do. I think we're just going to do the old school method at this stage because this is just a prototyping, quick and easy script. Don't want to get too complicated. Uh, and then later on when we adjust things, we can uh, rewrite it to be a bit more dynamic and a bit more stable. Um, but it, this this works fine. This works like like every game. Um, m most games use this uh, method. It's just as as good. It's just sometimes, uh, it's, uh, I don't know, it's just sometimes it's better practice to use a ray cast. But for now, let's just create a public bool and we're going to call that um, is grounded. So is the player grounded? And then in um, underneath flip player, we're going to create a new void on collision enter 2D. It's going to take a, I'm pretty sure it's collision 2D. I'm going to call it we're going to call that variable col, and then we're going to say if col. Actually, 
for now let's just say debug.log player uh, player has collided with space plus col cool now let's providing I've done that correctly it should work fine Player has collided with Unity Engine dot Collision three two D. Let's say col dot name dot collider dot name. Let's see if that works. Player has collided with ground, so it's found the ground object. If we jump into Player has collided with box, box ground, box ground, box ground. Cool. If he jumps over here, player has collided with ground one. Awesome. So we know that we are colliding with the correct things. Uh, and now what we can do is um, we can say if col dot game object dot tag equals ground. Put that in uh, as a string. Then we can say is grounded equals true. Awesome. So let's just go back into our project. Click on our player. Actually, we'll click on the two ground game objects. And we're going to change the tag up here. We're going to add a new tag. Go to ta add, a, add a tag called ground. Make sure it's lower or lowercase. Well, you can make it whatever you want, but you've got to make sure it's exactly the same as it is written in the code. Uppercase, lowercase is all going to be exactly the same. Add that. Click on ground and ground again because it didn't assign it. And then click ground. So now these two game objects are assigned to the tag ground. So inside, whatever's inside here, when the player collides with anything that's tagged with ground, it's going to run whatever's in between these two curly braces. And right now, all we need to do is say, is ground equals true. And then instead, we can create another debug.log underneath. Actually, we don't even need to create a debug.log because it's public. We can click on the player and we can see that he has an is grounded, which, he, which is false by default. And then when we press play, when he collides, bang, he collides with the ground. It is now turned on. Fantastic. I'm just going to, just to prove it, I'll move the player over here, press play. So he's not grounded as you can see here, now he's grounded. Awesome. But as he jumps, well, he can continue jump, jumping forever because it's he's still, uh, he, it's, he's, it still says that he is grounded. So we need to change that. So to change that, um, we want to make it so every time he jumps, it just changes this back to false. So we just copy that and put it in there and then turn that to false and jump back in cool so uh, is ground is on off on off on off on fantastic working perfect and then uh, that still doesn't solve our problem because the player can still keep jumping so we need to add that this is grounded into an argument that stops the player from being able to jump. So we need to look at where where do we have uh, where do we call jump from? So we got up here the only how jump the void jump gets called is by this line of code here. If input dot get button down jump, well then it runs the jump method. Um, but you can add in between these two um, brackets here. You can add a, another qualifier, which means that both these things have to be true for you, for you to be able to jump. So you can say and and just like you can say equals equals to um, and and will mean that you have to also complete this other argument to um, be able to jump and then we can say and and um, is grounded equals true cool so now what this is saying is if uh, you press the jump button and your character is grounded then you can jump so let's give that a go so character is not grounded, I can't jump at all because it started up here and started on false. Falls down, he, now he can jump. 
but you can only jump once. Fantastic, that works perfectly. Great. Now we can get rid of, um, well, let's leave that in there for now actually, but you can get rid of the debug.log if you, if you like, but um, I'm just gonna leave it in there for now. Okay, so the next thing, so they're the two little uh, cleanups I wanted to do of the project, and now I wanted to move on to actually creating a, uh, an enemy. And so to do that, let's jump back into Mario and check out how Mario does things. I forgot how to use the controls for a second there. So if we look, if we go up here, we can see that the enemy moves left and right and just bounces off the two pipes. I think that would be a good place to start for our enemy and for the AI. Very simple, just moves back and forth. Cool. Okay, so let's look at how to replicate that inside of Unity. Over in Unity, we're going to do File Save, and then I'm going to actually turn off the player, and I'm going to turn off the box. Actually, I'm going to borrow. I'm going to actually duplicate the box, copy paste, um, and I'm going to make some seriously ugly things. I suppose it doesn't need to be that big, but what the hey? Cool. And then I'm, so then we want a player, well an enemy, sorry, to move back and forth between these two things. And for this, um, because I don't see um, this changing too much, I think we are going to use a raycast, but we're gonna do a very, very simple um, type of raycast. Um, so what we need to do is let's choose a enemy out of this stuff. He can be a white cube, how about that? And he can, let's, let's change his color. Let's change it to a green. And let's add, um, we want to add first a box collider, then we want to add a rigid body 2D, and then we want to add a new script, and we're going to call this script enemy move. We can change that later, but let's just call this enemy move, and we're going to create and add. All right, let's open up that bad boy. All right, I'll zoom in for everyone. Okay, so there's a couple of ways we can do this, but I want to keep this pretty simple. Um, the first thing I want to do is create two variables. So public int uh, enemy speed. And then another one, um, public int uh, x x move direction. So what we could do is we could create a uh, vector, but I think uh, just an integer will do fine because he's only going to be moving on the x plane for now. So basically, what that means is if uh, for those who are new to Unity, so we have vectored vector twos in Unity, which is uh, your x and your y um, position, basically. Um, well, I'll explain it. I'll explain it like this. So you got your x here, which is zero, and your y here, which is zero, in, in the transform of the um, call this guy enemy. This is all just prototyping, remember guys, so it's nothing, too, nothing too serious if you're not following along exactly. Um, so it's got x of uh, 0 and a y of 0. Now we're not going to be, the, play, the character's not going to be moving, the enemy's not going to be moving in the y-axis, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, but we, he's going to be moving in the, or she's going to be moving, he's going to be moving in the x-axis, so we do need to worry about this. But instead of creating a new vector 2 that deals with um, the position of the x and the y, we can just deal with the x-position. So we can just refer to the x and all that. All to do that, all we need is an integer. So don't worry, I'll explain. It gets it. It does get easier. Um, and then we don't need a start at this stage. All we need to do is say game object dot get component. Rigid body two D dot velocity equals a new vector two like we were just talking about and the x the new the vector in the vector two we the x we want to feed the move x direction and the y which goes zero and then we want to times that by you guess it enemy speed 
Awesome. Okay, so let's check that out. So we go back to our player and we can see he's got an enemy um, speed variable here and an X move uh, direction here. So let's make them both one. Okay, let's put him, let's turn it off for a second and let's just get him to fall down. Okay. Awesome, so he moves from the left to the right. Now we, when, when he gets to the edge here, we want him to be able to, let's just drag him down. We want him to be able to uh, bang uh, into these guys or at least uh, get close to these guys and then turn around and go the other way. So to do that, we can use a raycast. Okay, to do that, we create a new raycast uh, hit 2D. I'm gonna call it hit and it's gonna to equal to physics 2D. Oh, not physics material, physics 2D dot raycast. And then we're going to raycast from our transform dot position to a new vector 2 and obviously the x will be our, our x move direction and our y will be um, 0 awesome and then we just want to have an if statement that says if hit dot distance is less than 0 0.7 let's say f so you, you're gonna have to test this out yourself uh, because obviously our characters might be different sizes but we're just basically saying if the distance between uh, the ray, ray and whatever it hits is less than 0 0.7 then we're going to do something and that something is going to be flip player which is a method that we haven't written yet. So let's just quickly write that. Void flip. Actually, what am I doing? We're just gonna call it flip. We're gonna call it flip player because it's not a player. Call it flip. Cool, so now it's just gonna flip uh, the enemy uh, when uh, he the distance gets less than 0 0.7. So if we go back to Unity, well, it's not going to do anything just yet. If we go back to Unity, we see here uh, that uh, the character is a certain size, and so the ray shoots right from the middle of, of the transform position, and then it moves outwards. But the problem is it's going to run into our character because our character isn't immune... Well, our, sorry, our enemy isn't immune to anything yet. Um, we need to, we'll need to fix this in the future, just, but for now, we can just tag the... Um, we can create a new layer for that enemy and just put it on ignore raycast, which means that the raycast won't touch the enemy at all. Cool, so back into, so just to confirm, just make sure I do that right, enemy, ignore raycast. Yep, happy days, layer, ignore raycast, cool, happy days. All right, in the flip, um, we're just, we're literally just going to write, um, if x move direction is greater than zero, well, then we want to make it less than zero. So we can say, oops, x move direction equals minus one. And then we can say else. So if, so if everyone understands, if move direction is greater than zero, do this. Else, if it's not greater than zero, then we're going to make this x move direction into one. So I hope everyone's following, but it's just, this is it. This is the entire, this is all the code that we need, I'm pretty sure, to make the player move, the, sorry, enemy, move back and forth. So let's just give that a test run and then I'll see if I can break down the code anymore. Let's make sure that we turn on our, our enemy. Let's make his speed, yep, four, awesome. Well, that works really well, actually. He gets pretty close and then bounces off the wall. If we were... That's I'm really happy with that, actually. <laughs> Woohoo! And you can see down here that um, the X move direction is going from negative 1 to 1. 
and now the enemy is just moving back and forth between these two pillars. Fantastic. Well, that works perfectly fine. Uh, let's make sure it's on by default. Uh, you can adjust some of these rigid body things to your liking. Um, I, I like to keep it on continuous with things like this, and obviously uh, I don't want it to rotate, so I'll put that on. Uh, but yeah, so let's make the enemy, keep enemy speed at four, um, and let's just demonstrate something. So if I make this, say, 1.7, this hit distance, then I hope, I hope you guys can guess that the player will bounce off the walls way before it gets to the walls. There you go. Does that make sense? The ray is shooting out from the center, and once that ray, all the time, and once that ray gets to a certain distance, it then uh, runs that, that code, and the code that we're going to run is just flip the player, and all that code does is it, when, it, when it flips the player, is changes as one variable from a negative one to a one or from a one to a negative one. Um, so, and that variable is the only thing responsible for our direction of movement in this line of code here, which moves the enemy. So that is it, guys. That is, we now have, let's just get our player crackalacking back in the game. Obviously, the enemy does nothing to him yet. We can touch that in the later episode. But, Hey, we got an enemy that moves back and forth, not unlike, actually that's driving me insane, I'm going to change this back to 0 0.7, not unlike Mario in any which way. Super Platform Bros. Awesome. Alright guys, well I'm going to leave that episode there. Thanks so much for checking it out. Uh, and uh, leave um, a like and a favorite and yada 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 and I'll uh, see you guys next time thanks to everyone who supported this episode uh, links are in the description for the Patreon if you want to check it out yourself and I'll see you guys next time peace out